Welcome in to Falcons Today by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here before the Tennessee March Madness game. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, we're discussing a Vols win. But I do have some free agency grades for you guys today. We're going to go signing by signing thus far. Free agency fluid. There will be more signings. But for now, let's go off the free agents that have been signed so far by Terry Fontenot and company. Starting with the big splash signing. It is Jesse Bates. Ladies and gentlemen, we have discussed Jesse Bates for quite some time on the channel. It's an A, right? Jesse Bates signing with the Falcons. I think from Atlanta's perspective, A.J. Terrell and Jesse Bates leading that secondary, that's an A grade right there, right? Landing Jesse Bates, especially at $16 million a season, I think is a really good deal. To me, you're getting one of the better up-and-coming safeties in football. He's not old. You're not catching him at the end of his career. He's 26, 71 tackles a season ago, uh, four interceptions to go along with it. This is an A signing in my book. I'm a big fan of this move. If you're a Falcons fan, I think he really shores up the back end of the secondary. Him, Grant, Terrell, Hayward, that's not going going to be an easy unit to move against. Also, it's the number one guy we are looking for in free agency. If you remember our perfect Atlanta Falcons free agency plan, it started with signing Jesse Bates. That's exactly what happened. That's an A in my book. Now, I think it's an A getting Jesse Bates. I want to know what you think the Falcons free agency overall has been so far. I don't think I can give it an A because they didn't get a dominant pass rusher, but they still could, and Gakwe's still out there. So I'll give it a B. I think it's a B so far. Let me know your thoughts down below. And hey, if they get more signings like Ngakwe or anyone else, we'll be breaking it down here on the channel. So make sure to subscribe. Help us get to 11,000 subs. The more subs means the more content you guys get because the more studio space for us here at Chat Sports. The next free agent signing, speaking of... Uh, former, I mean, uh, defenders and now former New Orleans Saint members, David Onyemata. I'm going to give the David Onyemata signing a B-. minus. I thought the contract was a little rich for Onyemata. I don't think he is a perennial Pro Bowl-type defensive tackle. Uh, I think he's a good defensive player, but I definitely didn't view him as one of the top five defensive tackles in free agency this year. And they gave him a good contract. Uh, well, they gave him a big contract, if you ask me. So I'm going B- minus for David Onyemata. Is he a good player? Yes. Is he going to come in and fix the pass rush? Probably not, right? And that's where you look at it and you go, okay, if Onyemata is not going to come in and really start turning this abysmal pass rush around, like he was paid somewhat to do, $24 million plus guaranteed, five sacks a season ago. I'm not saying he's not a good player. I just think three years, 35, might be a bit too rich for me for where I think Onyemata is. Now, speaking of former Saints players, now we get to Caden Ellis. So, the linebacker from Salt Lake City who went to Idaho. I'm going to give Caden Ellis a C+. Plus. Yeah, I think C+, plus sounds about right for Caden Ellis. Why? Because C's average. C's get degrees. Caden Ellis, he's got a degree in being a good linebacker. Is he one of the better in the league? No, and that's fine. Not every signing is supposed to be the cure to fixing all your free agency woes. I think Caden Ellis is sort of middle of the park, middle of the area when it comes to free agent linebackers. So last year with New Orleans, his first time really getting serious playing time, first time being an actual starter for the Saints, he exploded on the scene. Seven sacks, seven tackles for loss. That's great. That's awesome. I just don't know if I can buy in after one season and give him his roses and say, boom, Atlanta's got a Pro Bowl linebacker. But if he continues to play like this and build off of last year, I might look back and go, C-plus, what was I thinking? This was an A-plus signing. So who do you want Atlanta to sign next? Give me a name down in the comment section below who you'd like to see the Falcons go out and sign next in NFL free agency. I think this one's going to get a lot of people on their feet with a round of applause for Terry Fontenot and company. Caleb McGarry is coming back to man the right side of the offensive line. This is an A signing for two reasons. One, he was really good last year. After a really poor start to his career, let's call it what it is, he was one of the better offensive linemen in football. PFF ranked him as the fourth best tackle in NFL, actually, an 86.6 overall grade. But that's not so much why I'm giving him an A grade. It's more so because 
the contract. It was dirt cheap. This feels like an absolute steal, in my opinion. $11 million a season over the next three years? That's all it cost? I watched a lot of other tackles get a lot more money that weren't as highly ranked as McGarry last year in PFF's eyes. So for me, I think this is an absolute steal for Atlanta, and that's why it's an A signing. Now, this next one is not actually a signing, but I want to lump it in there. The Chris Lindstrom extension. Uh, he was the best, speaking of PFF, the best guard in football last year again uh, for PFF. Not a free agent, but the extension was awesome. Why? You should pay your good players, right? If they're good, hold on to them. Throw them the money when they are truly one of the best at their position. This is the best offensive guard in the NFL. If you're going off of PFF, there's some other great ones out there, right? Quentin Nelson, Joel Petonio, uh, Zach Martin, but Lindstrom, he is definitely getting into that upper tier with those players. So let's show the right guard some love. Spam 63 in the comment section below. That way he knows that Dirty Birds all over the country are showing him the business and the lovemaking. All right, that sounded weird, but what's not weird is this Falcons crew neck. It's on sale. Listen. I am a big believer in wear weather into existence. Wear your t-shirts when you want it to be a little bit warmer. It's not as warm as I thought it would be right now. So if you're still a little bit chilly but you want to be repping your favorite squad, get it today. The link's in the comments and the description. Chatsports.com slash Falcons Crew. Let's move on to the backup quarterback position, Taylor Heineke. I'm going to call him the backup. He is the backup, I believe, going into training camp and into the preseason. I'm going to give it a B-plus grade, though, because I think the Falcons probably have one of the best, if not the best, backup in the NFL because last year he was the backup for the Commanders, but he was way better than Carson Wentz. Listen, if things don't go swimmingly well with Desmond Ritter, I think you could feel a lot more comfortable about Heineke having to step in, right? If, for whatever reason, Ritter does not live up to be the guy, Taylor Heineke, like I said, is the next Ryan Fitzpatrick. If he comes in week five at halftime, Atlanta's Super Bowl bound. It's really that simple. Now, we got this tweet I want to share from William McFadden who says, Taylor Heineke says his mindset is to come in and be the best backup he can be for Desmond Ritter with the Falcons. He says Atlanta was up front with him about his role with the club. I love this, right? He's going to be one of the bros. He wants to be an Alex Marone. He wants to come in, hold the clipboard for a day or two, but if things don't go well with Ritter, he's a competitive dude, and he's not going to just sit by and watch this team potentially go down the toilet. An earlier signing that happened before free agency officially started, Lorenzo Carter returns, the former Georgia Bulldog, after being a New York Giants draft pick. Didn't work out there. It's just C-plus grade for me. Not because I think he's bad. Again, C is average, right? C's get degrees. Lorenzo Carter, he's got a degree in being a rotational edge piece. Four sacks last year for the Falcons. That was good for second most in the uh, on the team behind Grady Jarrett. So two year deal worth up to nine million dollars. You're paying what you get. For, you're getting what you pay for. You're paying for four and a half million dollars a season. Four-plus sacks? Awesome, right? I think Lorenzo Carter, it's a C-plus move. Now, we've ran through majority of the Falcons signings so far. What's your favorite one? Is it Caleb McGarry because of the contract value? Or is it the big, splash, Jesse Bate signing? Let me know in the comments section. The final free agent signing we're going to look at today is Keith Smith, the fullback. I think most people that have gotten this far in the video are like, mm, who? Yeah, it's a fullback, right? You want to know his grade? His grade is destroy people in front of uh, Tyler Algier. That's his grade right there. It's a long grade, but I'm not giving it a letter grade. His grade is to make sure Tyler Algier does not have any grass stains on his jersey. But I am happy to have him back. I think this team is going to round, is going to run and pound the rock next year. Algier ended the year on a really high note, so giving him some nice insurance in front is definitely going to help. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in, making us a part of your day. I'm going to sign off, and I'll catch up with everyone later as we get more Falcons free agency news and rumors.